This video is sponsored by the Magic Bullet Kitchen Express. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, a salad was probably the last thing I was ordering off a menu because salads were boring. They looked like this, at least for me, this is what a salad looked like, and that is not exciting. This is the type of food that I wanted to order. This is the exciting stuff. But as I got older, these salad shops started popping up where you could customize your own salads and throw in those fun additions and pick that perfect salad dressing and finally, salads became delicious, which is great because salads are packed with nutrition, but they're also great to eat for lunch. I eat them all the time for lunch because they don't weigh me down and I'm a busy guy and I wanna stay efficient in the day. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is how to create that salad shop experience in your own kitchen by giving you the proper systems you need to be able to go into your fridge, go into your pantry, create a really flavorful salad dressing completely from scratch and then of course build out the perfect salad but before we get into any cooking we got to take a little field trip to where our salad journey begins so if you want to make a really good salad we're talking above average salad you gotta hunt down good ingredients quality fresh ingredients and of course the best way to do that is your local farmers market or whatever fresh market is around you especially when it comes to sourcing good lettuce because lettuce is so perishable so the grocery stores are generally going to have the stuff in bags or in plastic because it's going to be able to ship across the country or wherever it's coming from and also you see the same stuff in the grocery stores the romaine the spring mix the arugula when you come to your local market you can break out of that basic lettuce world and into a new dimension of lettuce filled with all types of varieties and of course there's nothing fresher than a head of lettuce coming from a farm that's around you unless you know you're growing it yourself this is red leaf right here red leaf, yeah. take um, a red leaf hello who's next though hi how are you now, when you get back from the market, if your greens aren't cleaned, well, you gotta clean them off. And the best way to do that is a salad spinner, which is a great investment if you don't have one, but you can clean off your greens with just a bowl of water and some towels as well. So what I like to do is take my head of lettuce and first pick off the exterior wilted or damaged greens. Then I start picking off each leaf individually and putting them into the bowl. And once you get to the interior of the head of lettuce, I usually just rip off the core, which will then release all of those smaller leaves. Then I fill up the bowl with water until the leaves are completely submerged and then start ruffling up those greens, which is gonna release the dirt or the sand or whatever debris is on your greens and it's going to fall to the bottom. So when you straight off that water, all of the dirt or debris is going to wash away with the water. And if your leaves are super dirty, you might wanna repeat this step one or two more times until the water is a little more clear or your leaves are looking nice and clean. And then you're ready to spin. So I'm gonna activate my salad spinner, which uses centrifugal force to spin off the excess liquid. But again, if you don't have a salad spinner, you can just take your leaves out of the water and put them on a towel or a paper towel and just pat them dry. Now, as far as storing your greens, there's a few different techniques here. My favorite is to get some type of food storage container, add a paper towel to the bottom, which will soak up any excess moisture that could potentially wilt your greens quicker and place those greens in the container. And because there's walls, and you have structure to your container, this is going to protect your greens from getting damaged. But when it comes to a hardier greens, usually I'll just wrap those up in some paper towel and then put them in a reusable plastic bag and those are good to just go right in the fridge. So the first appliance that I actually ever got in the kitchen was a mini food processor, which at the time completely transformed my cooking game because it opened up the world of fresh sauces and salad dressings. Now this Magic Bullet Kitchen Express is the perfect all-in-one food processor. And I know sometimes we want those big fancy appliances, but to be honest, you'll probably end up using something of this size much more often in the kitchen because it's easier to use, it's easier to clean up, you can just throw it right in the dishwasher. It's it's definitely easier to store and you're probably only cooking for yourself or a few other people so you really don't need a big machine to get the job done. I also really love kitchen gadgets that can perform multiple tasks especially when you have a tighter kitchen and you don't want the clutter of a ton of appliances and this Magic Bullet Kitchen Express pretty much does it all. You can make a smoothie in here, you can chop and shred veggies but most importantly you can easily flavor blast your food by making a fresh sauce or salad dressing in here in a matter of minutes which is what you 
you're about to learn. So if you're interested in this Magic Bullet Kitchen Express, head over to getmagicbullet.com. So my goal when it comes to salad dressings is not to teach you how to make the perfect vinaigrette with the perfect techniques. You can go to culinary school to learn that. For me, it's about using what you have, going into the pantry, going into the fridge, and seeing what's available to make a dressing. And to do that, you need to understand balancing of flavors. When it comes to sauce or dressing, it's all about flavor balancing. So I'm gonna make three completely unique salad dressings using my basic flavor guide to hopefully give you a little more confidence to get funky with it and use what you have in the kitchen. So in round one, we're gonna pick our base flavor. This is the flavor that will be most prominent in our dressing and also what we're gonna build our dressing around. So for dressing one, I'm using some soaked cashews. And if you're using nuts in a sauce or dressing, you always wanna soak them to break down the cell walls so they emulsify in nice and smooth. For dressing two, I'm using some sun-dried tomatoes which are packed with umami. A lot of great flavor there. And then for dressing three as the base, I'm using some miso paste, which again is packed with umami. It's a little funky, it's a little sweet, and a great base for any sauce or dressing. Now round two is all about the aromatics, the herbs and the spices that are literally going to spice up your dressing and add that aroma, that next layer of flavor. So dressing one, I'm going with some cilantro. I can use the leaves and the stems, two cloves of garlic and some cumin seeds. For dressing two, again, I'm going in with a garlic clove and some parsley leaves. And then for dressing three, I'm using some ginger, which I'm actually going to grate in to make sure I don't have any big chunks of ginger. I'm also gonna add some sesame oil, which is a wonderful way to instantly add a sesame aroma throughout your entire dressing. Now round three is the sweet and spicy round, which are both completely optional, but this is all about flavor preference. How do you wanna balance your dressing? For dressing number one, I'm going in with some smoked paprika. For dressing number two, just a little bit of honey to sweeten it up. And then for dressing number three, that miso paste is already a bit sweet, so I'm going in with a little bit of chili paste to spice it up. Now round four is that acidic element, which is mandatory. You need that acid to really make your salad dressing pop. For dressing one, I'm going in with the juice of one whole lime, which is really gonna pair nicely with those Mexican flavors like the cilantro and the cumin. For dressing two, I'm going in with the juice of one lemon, but you wanna make sure you strain out the seeds of the lemon, because if you start blending up some lemon seeds, you're gonna be adding a lot of additional bitterness that you probably don't want in your dressing. And then for dressing three, I'm gonna build off all those Asian flavors and go in with some rice vinegar. Now dressing is used to season other raw ingredients, so it needs to be heavily seasoned to make an impact. I'm gonna season the first two dressings with salt, and for the third dressing, that miso paste is plenty salty, so I'm gonna hold off on adding extra salt until I give it a taste. Now round four is your oil or your fat element, which again is essential for dressing. You need that oil element to really bring your dressing together, to give it a little more of that mouthfeel, to give it some creaminess. So for dressing one, I'm gonna go in with some avocado oil. Dressing two, since I've got more Italian or Mediterranean flavors, I'm gonna use some olive oil. And finally for dressing three, I'm just gonna use a neutral canola oil because it's already so flavorful. Now the last round of the adjustments, which are so important whenever you're making any sauce or a dressing. You gotta be tasting it to see where you stand, to see how those flavors balance. And I would just say to trust yourself. Give it a taste and just think for a second. Trust that your palate knows what this dressing needs. Spice is good. Do I have another lime? If I have another lime, I'll probably squeeze in half a lime. Could use a little more acidity and just a little bit more salt. And I think we're perfect. So, mm. I like that one. I think I nailed that one on the first shot. So just a little bit of water to thin it out and we're good to go. So obviously we'll need some water in there. It's on the thicker side, but it's taste for seasoning. Salty enough, good spice. Definitely 
Definitely needs to be thinned out. I think it's missing a little sweetness. I thought the miso would be sweet enough. This is a younger miso, which is pretty sweet, but it needs some sweetness. You know what? I actually think I was gonna add mirin to this and I forgot, and that's what it needs. A little bit of mirin will have a nice sweetness, a little more of that acidic kick from the mirin as well. So that should be perfect. intense with the water, of course, but the mirin. It's all about balance, all about balance when you're making a sauce or a dressing. I think the reason more people don't eat salads is because traditionally salads are made up of a lot of greens or veggies, and that's a little boring. At least for me, that's not motivating enough to eat more greens and veggies. The key is to camouflage those greens and veggies and almost trick yourself into eating more of them by making this a complete dish, by adding all of these other elements that make your salad fun. And of course, the options are endless. You can put anything in your salad, but like I did for the dressing, I made a system to help you build out your salad step by step to actually make it more enjoyable to eat. I'm gonna make two different salads using this system and the first element is of course your base greens. So for salad one, I'm going in with some butter lettuce that I got at the market. And if the leaves are super small, you can toss those in whole. Or if the leaves are bigger, you can chop those up however you want. And I'm also gonna use some kale that I'm finely chopping. And then for the base of salad two, I'm using this green I got at the market. I actually don't know the name of it. And then some more butter lettuce. Now the next round is all about your fresh veggies. What are those heartier veggies that will complement those greens? For salad one, I'm gonna add some sprouts and then I'm gonna to take a carrot and what I like to do is take a peeler and you get these nice shaved pieces that not only look sexy in your salad but they also give it some really nice texture and I'm also going to chop up some fresh radish and get that in the mix. And for salad two I've got some corn and I'm going to shave it right off the cob because it's super juicy and sweet at least for the corn around here on the east coast and then I'm going to add some sliced cucumbers as well. Now round three is where you can add some of those pantry elements that you might have hanging around like nuts or seeds or dried fruit that could add a little textural element a little saltiness a little sweetness. So for salad one I'm going in with some raisins and for salad two I'm going in with some sunflower seeds. Now round four for me is always super important to making a delicious salad, which is adding some type of grain. Now my favorite way to incorporate grains or carbs in this case is some leftover sourdough. If I have some stale sourdough, I will chop that up into pieces, get a little oil in a hot pan, throw in those stale bread pieces, add some dried herbs, a little bit of salt, and just start frying those up until those are nicely browned and toasted. And just like that, you've got sourdough croutons that are so delicious. They're gonna soak up that dressing, which I'll add to salad one. And for salad two, I actually don't have any leftover grains in my fridge. So I'm gonna keep this one plain, but if I did have some rice or some quinoa, this would be a great place to add it. Now round five for me is where I would add a cheese element or some type of fatty element. And one of my favorite ways to do that is some fresh avocado which I'm gonna to add to salad one. And then for salad two, I'm gonna add some cheese and you could crumble in some blue cheese or some fresh cheese in there. But I also like taking a harder cheese. This is a hard goat cheese and just taking a peeler like I did with the carrots and peeling pieces of cheese in there. Round six is the way you make your salad a complete meal, which is adding a protein element. And for me, this is the key to making salads sustainable where I'm eating them every day for lunch because they're filling me up. And also a protein element, that's what it takes for me to make my salads exciting. So for salad one, I took a chicken breast, which had the skin on and I salted that and made sure that it was nice and dry and just fried that up in a pan for about three to four minutes aside. And then what I like to do with chicken breast is take it off a little bit early and put that on a plate with some tin foil because it's going to continue to cook. And this is a great way from keeping your chicken breast from overcooking in the pan. And then for salad too, if you don't want to use meat, you could use a vegetarian option like tofu. But one of my favorite protein elements is some hard boiled eggs. To make perfect hard boiled eggs, you're going to want to bring a pot of water to a boil 
and then lower in your eggs very slowly, just dipping them in and out. This is gonna temper your eggs a bit and keep them from cracking. And then you're gonna set your timer and want them a little more runny, like a half boiled egg, cook them for six minutes. And if you want a full boiled egg, cook them for 12 minutes. So for me, I pulled mine at 11 minutes and popped them right in some ice water to stop the cooking. And then I crack the shell, peel the eggs, and those are ready to chop up and throw into my salad. I added all that chopped up chicken to salad one and then those hard boiled eggs to salad two. And I was looking at salad two and it just felt like it was missing something. And I looked over on my countertop and there they were. Beautiful cherry tomatoes, one of my favorite salad ingredients. And also these tomatoes are gonna add such a nice color pop to that sea of green. And then the final round is the dressing. And I've got three to choose from, which is a difficult choice because I only have two salads here. So for salad one, I went with the cashew dressing. I thought it would pair nicely with that. And for salad two, I went with the sun-dried tomato dressing. And when you're mixing up your salad, you want to be gentle with it. You're not kneading your salad like it's bread dough. It's a gentle folding. You try to get under the base of the salad and just lift it up and fold it over and continue doing that until that salad dressing is incorporated and coating all of your ingredients. There you go, that's your complete guide on making salads not sucky. <laughs> that is the goal. We don't want boring salads, we wanna be eating them all the time, but we also wanna be using the ingredients we have on hand. So hopefully I gave you some tips on how to do that. If you want some more videos, some skill-based videos like this, check out these two right here and I'll see you in the next video. This video is sponsored by the Magic Bullet Kitchen Express.